And Tim is going to do some music, and I invite you to plant yourself in your chair, relax, close your eyes if you feel you can. Let go of the day. Just let go. You're in such a safe sanctuary place. Blessed are we who walk down the hard road, the winding one that doesn't opt for the shortcut of rage or resentment or unkind words that doesn't pave over with trite niceties, but walks towards peacemaking. Blessed are we when facing hardships of all sorts. 
blessed are we working to usher in God's kingdom of love even when it's hard. Blessed are we the imperfect and don't have it all together the imperfect perfection God's beloved. As we come back to the here and to the now, come back gently. Come back allowing yourself to be that perfect, imperfect, perfect child of God that you are. So welcome back. If you showed up last week and weren't here, you know why. I want to talk about Charles Fillmore's views on what he called the little wigglers. And I'd like to make this the Ask It Basket Sunday. So all of you have cards, and if you have any questions about Unity, Unity of the West Side, or any other question for your minister, like me, I invite you to write it down, and I'll do my best to answer it, or Possibly I'll do a talk later on on your question if I don't know the answer to it. I'd like to say one more thing before we start out. And I just want to say this out loud to all of you. In this ministry, we are here for each other. We pray for each other and we help each other whenever we can. We are a solid spiritual community filled with health, abundance, and love. That is our truth. Now, if you're not feeling well on a Sunday, the recording of the Sunday talks can be found on the website on a YouTube channel. I encourage us all to remember that we have a responsibility to each other to show up healthy and not endanger each other with sickness. So if you're not feeling well, stay in bed for Sunday morning and we'll be here when you're ready to come back. This COVID thing is like bed bugs. You never know exactly where they come from. <laughs> but I want to be clear as I say this in the most loving way. Stay home if you're sick. Several, several people have asked me if Charles Fillmore had commented about the flu pandemic of 1918. Now, Mark Hicks, who does truthunity.net, didn't find anything in those years, but he searched and searched. And there's an essay from 1909 that directly addresses the current situation with both flus and the big COVID word. When you read the essay carefully, you'll find that Charles Fillmore does not say that we've created these little wigglers by the activity of our thinking. We have not. But what he repeatedly says throughout the essay is that we have mistakenly named their place in God's perfect creation as evil. God creates microbes. Adam names them. Now you know the metaphysical meaning of Adam is our human self. So we have these microbes that happen in our body and we name them. We give them importance. Mr. Fillmore would have us do four things to overcome these beasts of the field 
whose offer whose office it is to make them miserable. Now, if you were one of the people that held, held your hand up, I know how miserable you were. <laughs> but he wants us to clean up our thinking faculty with wisdom and love so that we may seek a higher source of wisdom than ourselves and reflect it. He wants us to embrace materia medica and to connect it with metaphysics so that we may partner with our health leaders to overcome the ravages of disease and death. He wants us to reject hate germs such as anger and jealousy, malice, lust, ambition, and all the detestable ideas that mankind harbors. Finally, Mr. Fulmer wants us to embrace our image and our likeness of God by naming the truth and goodness of all creation. Let me elaborate a little bit on that last point. How we name COVID just might be the way that we move forward. No doubt when you have COVID or the flu, this is a defining moment when all things are open to change. As a human race, we have an opportunity to improve democracy, achieve peace, care for the poor, and fix our climate. As individuals, we have an opportunity to open our heart to others and rebuild relationships. As a church, we have an opportunity to redefine how we deliver spiritual beliefs in a world underserved by traditional religion. In summary, the way to overcome this little wiggler is not to kill it, but to transform it to good. The way is forward. Now laying in my bed, I had to transform it to good. And I managed this by going to my grateful place. Going to your grateful place. I was grateful that I had the weekend to sleep and rest my body tumble. And I was laying there praying for everybody who I knew had it and those who I didn't know that had it. I held them and myself in the white light of healing and love, knowing that health is our natural state and that we would all return to that state. I did come up with one other thing when I was laying there, <clears throat> and it's from this little book of healing. So um, this is from Elizabeth Longo, and they were tips for um, some emotional healing. And one of it was to journal. Now, when I was laying there, I was feeling a lot of things. Um, not all my feelings were positive. So I started to journal about them. And as I started to journal about them and I went to my grateful place, it was funny how I turned it around to, I am lucky to have this time to lay in my bed and allow myself to be healthy again. Allow myself to go through these body aches, to go through what I went through and be healthy again. During the day, I stopped several times and brought my awareness to the moment. And I noticed how my body was feeling. And I'd say, oh, my back feels better. Oh, my throat feels better today. And somebody would ask me, I, I had family calling and check on, checking in on me and they'd say, Carol, how you doing? I'm excellent. Now, was I really excellent? <laughs> Yeah, I was. I was because I had this time to go through this and people dropped me off soon. Thank God. People checked on me. Thank God. And there was a whole lot of prayer. Those prayer chaplains were all <coughs> in overdrive because I, I think it hit everybody but Nancy. Yeah. Um, so prayer chaplains and Nancy was holding the fort down. I could feel her holding the fort down with the prayer chaplains. So there are definite things that we can do when life isn't going our way, when we're feeling like, oh, why did this happen to me? I never asked why, why was I healthy? <laughs> so why should I ask, why am I not? 
So I have uh, some of the articles that um, Truth Unity did, um, how the microbes are made. It's in really small print. You have to get, I had to get a magnifying glass, but I have some copies that I have doused with Lysol, just for everybody. Um, can I have the basket of questions? Do you have any questions? Okay, it's the ask it basket, not stump the minister like us some churches call it. <sighs> Talk about the five principles, which is the most important. Five principles are, there's only one presence and one power in my life, God the good. The second principle is I see God in everything and everyone. In every situation, I can see God. The third is that with God and with my thoughts, I co-create my reality. I co-create, and a lot of people have a lot of problems with the third principle. I didn't create this COVID, I didn't create this. Yeah, we kind of did. We push ourselves. All day long, we push, we push, we push. I've been traveling. I haven't been doing my universal precautions as much as I have. Universal precautions, you know what they are? Wash your hands. As many times you think about it, wash your hands. That's what I tell my staff. Um, that's the third principle. The fourth principle is that through prayer and meditation, we get closer to God. And the fifth is it's not just okay to know those principles, but you must live them. So the one I think is most important is the living of the principles. Do I live like God is within everybody? Do I greet the stranger that doesn't look like me, that uh, may come from a different place and doesn't speak my language? Do I, do I greet them with love? Or do I greet them with hesitation? Do I greet them with fear? And my answer is, I greet them with love. And fear has no place in my life. So that's the walking of the principles. And I always say, you know, in my talks, um, my talks are okay talks, but I really want everybody to remember, long after I'm gone from here, how, how did I work here? Did you see my work ethic here? Did you get a good feeling about the church, the ministry? Did, were, you, were you happy coming to Sunday services knowing that, boy, Carol is going to try to give a really good message this week? That's what I, I my words are, are nice, but I want you to remember how I acted. Um, how does unity explain why bad things happen to good people? That's a hard one, huh? So bad things are bad things. Usually God did not make them. I know this is news. Usually they are man-made, right? But it was, I forget it, I think it was Mr. Rogers whose mom told him to look for the helpers in every situation that was going on. Look for the people who are actually helping. That's God. That is God showing up. During the riots um, that we had in Los Angeles, I got my broom out and went down with my neighbors and cleaned the neighborhood from the glass and the, that was God. Each one of them were God. And that's how God shows up. God shows up as us. You're waiting for some big guy to come out of the sky. You're going to be really disappointed because he's going to say, I sent the guy in the boat and I sent the guy in the airplane and he didn't get on any of those. And so, what, you know, what do you want me to do? So bad things are going to happen. Just because you have faith does not, it's, it does not insulate you from the bad things happening. What it does is it carries you through those bad things. It carries you through laying there and not feeling so good. That was a great question. 
What do you say when asked if Unity is a Christian church? Hmm. <laughs> so this has been a, a big part of a Unity discussion that's been going on. And if you've read any of Charles Fillmore, you know that we have Christian roots. Our roots are very, very Christian. Um, but not the new type of Christian that wants to twist the gospel to say what they want it to say. When Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gave a clear direction. Love thy neighbor. Feed the hungry. Help the sick. That's the Jesus. That's the Christian. Jesus wasn't a Christian either. <laughs> right? Jesus was Jewish. <laughs> Buddha was not a Buddhist. I got news for you. These guys did not start out to, to create something, but look what they've created. And in this country, Christian has taken on a different connotation. It, it's almost been politicized. Mm -hmm. I back away from that. I follow Jesus the way shower. I acknowledge our Christian roots. But I also acknowledge there's a lot of pain in Christianity. There's a lot of pain in Catholicism. There's a lot of pain in a church that you might have gone to before you showed up here today that either judged you maybe judged you on your sexuality, maybe judged you on whether you were on birth control or not, maybe judged you because whatever they judged you for. Unity operates in love. We, we try not to judge because we don't want to be judged. There's only one judge, God the good. And God loves all his children. And you know, somebody had asked me a question. Um, I got in a car with somebody who asked, um, was I for Palestine or was I for Israel? Oh, Talk about a car, and I'm trapped in the car with this guy. He's driving me home from the airport. And I said, I pull myself above it, and I pray for both sides. I pray for Israel, and I pray for Palestine, and I pray for all the people and all the children. And he said, don't you know what the, what he obviously had aside. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I am consciously neutral yes. and I pray for all. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of Christianity that I believe in. That I can love my Palestine brother and love my Israeli sister. And I can pull myself above to a place of prayer and a place of Peace. How do we let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me? Okay. How do you deal with someone in your life who is negative? Have you met my sister? <laughs> oh, I hope she doesn't watch that. And if you do, I love you. <laughs> you know? Um, a lot of times when you have somebody in your life who's negative and you try to talk positively to them, they, they just want to fight. Mm -hmm. They just want to counter it with something more negative. So I go to that quiet, still space where I look at that person and I say, God bless them. Who needs blessings more than that person? Mm -hmm. Who needs blessings? The person that can't wrap their head around being grateful that you had COVID and had the time to lay in bed and have COVID. How can you be grateful for that? I just can't. It's between me and God. Mm -hmm. So I find it best to not engage. I find it best to go to my place, my still small place within me. And sometimes I thank God I'm not that person. I had a whole conversation with my niece about that last night. I thank God that I do have this joyous, optimistic outlook. Because that is a gift that not many people have been given. And we, we bump into them every day. So if you have that gift, you go home and you count your blessings. And that's one of them. Can you speak to our purpose? Yes, I can. We have one purpose. 
to love each other. In this spiritual community, we have one purpose, to love each other and to support each other in this spiritual community. Whether that's through prayer, whether that's through meditation, whether that's through our gift cards that we hand out to people who come to the door and they're hungry. That's our purpose here. Our purpose is to help each other, to love each other, to not judge each other, and to find peace as we coexist with everyone. So I'm gonna end my talk there today. I do have the Little Whittler articles that I'm gonna put out, and thank you very much for letting me speak today.